Welcome to edupediaworld.com. In today's video, we will learn about force and pressure. Now in the present video, first we will talk about what is force and thereafter how to measure force. Then in the second video, then we will link the pressure and the force together. How is pressure and force connected? What is the relationship between two things? But in the current video, we will only talk about force and how to measure force. So as we have learnt earlier that a for if I apply any force to any object or any push or any pull to an object then it moves. Let's consider a ball. Now the ball is stationary. This ball will remain stationary as long as I don't apply any external push or pull or any kind of force. Now what happens when I push the ball? When I push the ball the ball moves. So what can force do? Of any push or any pull or any lift, all these are forces. We have also studied this earlier. So a force is a push or a pull that can change the state of the object. Why do I say so? Now you can see this example. This girl is swinging. Now if I give a push, she will start swinging. But if I don't, do not give a push and I stand at one side, then after some time the swing will come to rest because there is no external force that is applied onto the swing. <clears throat> what I can do is I can come in front of the girl and I can stop the girl. I can stop the swing. So a force can change the state. What is the state? The swing was stationary before and then if I give a push it will start swinging. So now the state is changed. Initially it was stationary now it is moving. If it is moving I can stop it by, with my hand. So again a stationary swing is now made to come to rest because of force. So the state of any object or any body can be changed because of force. <clears throat> this also we have studied earlier and what all a force can do, a force can change the shape of the object, it can change the speed of the object, it can also change the direction of the object and it can stop an object. Now just one one example of each, how can we change the shape? If I have a ball and I squeeze the ball with my hand then the shape is changing. The shape of the ball is changing because I'm applying a force. Initially it was round, now it has become slightly flattened. So this is how the shape of the ball is, the shape of the object is changed. Again, if I have a spring, what happens? If I pull the spring, the spring gets stretched. So again, the length of the spring is changed. So the shape is also again changed. Initially it was very small, now it is stretched. If I have a rod, a metal rod, and if I can apply force and twist the rod, then again it was straight initially, now it is bent. So the shape of the rod is changed. Again in the third example you can see, if I hammer an empty can, then the empty can gets crushed. So the shape is again changed. So force can do a lot of things. A force can change the shape of object, any object. Then I can change the speed <coughs> of the object. In what way can I change the speed of the object? If I, you can see here two cyclists. One is cycling, you know, with less force and the other one is cycling very hard. He's applying a lot of force. So what happens, the, the person who's applying a lot of force, his cycle will be ahead of the other person who's applying less force. So he is getting speed. By applying large amount of force, he's speeding. He goes fast, he reaches fast wherever he is reaching. So a force can change the speed of the object. Next, the girl is playing hockey. What happens? If she applies less force, the ball with the help of the stick goes to a very lesser distance. Wherever if she applies large amount of force, if she hits the ball very hard, then it travels a large distance, a, low, a much greater distance. So that's how any application of force can change the speed of the object. Now, how how is that the direction is changing? You have all must have seen cricket match. What happens is the baller will ball and it so the ball is coming from one direction. On the other hand, what happens? A batsman uses his force and with the help of the bat, he's trying to hit the ball. So when he hits the ball, the ball goes in the other direction. That is in the any direction it can go. It can go in opposite direction to what the baller is throwing the ball. So in this way, the batsman is trying to change the direction of the object. 
Now, how can you stop an object by applying force? Now, you all must have seen football match. In that, what happens is the goalkeeper tries to stop the ball. So, what he does is he uses his hand and he applies force and he stops the ball. So, this is how we can all apply force to stop an object. So, uh, now what we have learned is the force can change the state of any object. Again, in what way? If I have an object, it is stationary on the ground, I can lift the object. So now, and I can move the object, I can lift and move the object. So this object was stationary, now a person is just lifting and it is, it is moving. So again, the state is changing. Now these examples are different from the examples that we have studied earlier. In that, it is either stationary or it was moving. But in this case, if a person is just lifting and going, so it is not, uh, the object is still stationary because the person has lifted the object and it is moving. So this is also change in the state of the object. So it is not just push or pull, which is a force, but it is a pull, push, lift, hit, or, and what all can you say? Any, any kind of force that you apply on any object which changes the state of the object is known as force. Now, <clears throat> first, we will uh, now learn as to how can we measure the force. We all know that uh, there are different things are measured in different uh, units. For example, look at the first picture, what we have liquid or water or milk. That is always measured in liters. What do we say when we go out and we buy the milk? We say, give me two liters of milk, right? In the second picture, the onions, any like onions, potatoes, vegetables, these are measured in kgs, right? Because uh, these objects, uh, they, in that, what is measured? Mass is measured, but in liquids, volume is measured. So we talk about liquid, uh, liters. And also in the case of vegetables, we talk about kgs. We never go out and say, give me two liters of onion give give me two liters of potato no we say give me two kgs of potato height how do we measure heights we measure heights in terms of meters centimeters you know distance if it is distance then it is kilometers right temperatures we measure in terms of degree celsius and fahrenheit so every each and every object is measured in some or the other unit likewise even the force is measured and the unit of force is Newton. We say if I'm pushing because we know a force is a push, pull or lift. So if I'm pushing, I'll say, let's say I applied five Newtons of push. I applied five Newtons of pull like that. So if I say I applied five push, then it is an incomplete information. It is always along with the unit, the information is complete. So it is 5 newtons of force. It is 10 newtons of force. So the SI unit of force is newtons. So now, now we will learn how much is the force applied and from which direction is the force applied. When we talk about force, there are two things that is important. So first, how much is the force applied is the magnitude of the force. What is the magnitude? How much is the force applied? And the second one is from which direction or in which direction is the force applied. So whenever we talk about force, these two things are very, very important because they determine what will be the force if there are two people applying. If there are two people who are applying force in the same direction, then what will be the net force? If there are two people applying force in the, in the opposite direction, then what is the force? So there are two things very important. So direction is very, very important. Now, Let's see, uh, consider we have this person, he's trying to push this 15 kgs of weight. So what are the two information that we have right now here? First information is the magnitude of the force. That is, he is applying 10 Newton of force onto an object, which is weighing 15 kgs. And what is the direction? Towards the right, he is pushing. On the other hand, we have the same person now. He's trying to push the same object. He is applying 10 Newton of force and he is trying to push the object towards left. So there are two different cases and these are two different things. Two different cases, like right? because one is pushing to the right and the other one is pushing to the left. 
so these are not same these are two different things now application of force in the same direction if we have two people who are trying to push the object in the same direction then what happens how is the direction important in these cases now we have an object which is um, you can say it is 5 kgs and the person is trying to push the object he is applying force f1 which is 10 newtons so the magnitude of the force is 10 newtons and he is let's say he is pushing the object towards right now we have another person who's joining the same person and he, now he is applying a force let's say it is f2 and both of them are now trying to push the object towards right so what will happen one is applying 10 newton of force and the other person is applying 20 newton of force so what will happen what is the net force will the now you tell me will the object move easily or they will find it difficult to move the object obviously now because there are two people and they're trying to push the object in the same direction then they'll find it much easy to push the object so what is the now the total force that is applied onto the object is f1 plus f2 which is nothing but 10 plus 20 which is 30 newtons so initially where only 10 newton was applied now both of them together are applying a force of 30 newton on the object so the object will move very very easily so the sum of all the force that is applied will be the total force will be the net force when the force is applied in the same direction because it helps it adds that's why now let's see what happens when there are two people who are trying to apply the force in the opposite direction so as you can see again there's one object and there's one person he is applying a force towards right the other person is trying to apply the force towards left so all in the opposite direction they are applying and what will happen will the object move easily or they will find it difficult to move the object let's say the first person is applying force f1 which is 10 newtons and in the right direction whereas the other person he is applying force f2 the magnitude of the force applied by the second person is 30 newtons that is f2 let's say and he is pushing the object in the opposite direction that is towards left so now what will happen they will find it difficult because each of them are pushing the object towards each other so the net force will be f which is equal to f2 plus f minus f1 that is 30 minus 10 which is 20 newtons so whenever there are two people who are applying force in the opposite direction then the net force will be difference of the applied force that is why i said direction in this case is the most important thank you for watching the video